Well, welcome to Tea Time with Tortellini Johansson. My guest today is Megan Harader of the Big Street Booger Boys. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. I, uh, I uh, bought uh, my own tea. Hey, there we go. Tomato tea. Yeah. Well, more tea for me with all of the non-alcohol you could ever want. The show is actually called Salt People with Tommy, and uh, I'm, you know, they know, they already know. They don't know who you are, though. You're my guest, your name is Mother 2, and you're in the band Lauren Belmore. That is, that is absolutely right. Yeah, uh, my name is Lauren Belmore, and I am in the band Mother 2. Okay. <laughs> It feels, um, it's really interesting because the the set itself is very cathartic. It's very primal, um, and so sometimes when people play in bands like that, some people like to rile themselves up a little bit beforehand. Sometimes they, they slap go, themselves in the face. They go bit. somewhere else and kind of like get in the zone. I don't really do that. Um, I just kind of allow myself on stage to let it happen. So like while other people before the set might go off and do it on stage, I am actively doing it, which is why the first part's a little more quiet. Mm -hmm. It ramps um, up. Yeah, it, it rubs up. And then afterward, you just feel, it's almost like you run a marathon. Like mm -hmm. you just feel very exhausted. I think after the show last night, I kept saying things like, God, I'm so sweaty. Or God, I'm so tired. Like immediately I sat down and I was like, okay. I'm done. I was like, it's over. What in the world's going on with the drums? What What is this giant spring? Okay, so that's a, a coil. Um, if I'm right, I could be totally wrong, and then Stefan will see this and be like, no, it's this. <laughs> um, I, it's an oil coil, or he got it from a steel, a steel, we can buy steel and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, so the coil, because of the way it's built, he has um, pickups that are taped onto it. So you have the coil, and it has like all of the space between it and the way it's shaped, you know, if you run something down, it creates all of these sounds. Like when a slinky is going down Exactly. The and so that, you know, creates a different soundscape. And also it's appealing because you're like, oh, what the fuck is that? I've never seen anyone use a fucking oil coil on stage. You're kind of lurched over like you're a supervillain on this machine. <laughs> I have no idea what that thing was. And then you start on with the growling and these, these kind of slinky noises. Uh, brings me to my next question. How, how do you organize your sound? Um, I, I think that when you are doing something like, you know, I think when the Beatles were recording their albums, they they got together and like decided on a two minute, 15 second segment where they'd be playing synchronized things to make a song. <laughs> Do you have songs? Do you have albums? <laughs> no. Or is uh, it improvisational? This was, yeah, this was our fifth show. Um, we we just decided to do this, and we'd been talking about doing it for a while. And he, you know, we're both involved in other projects and other aspects of the art scene in DFW. So you know, it's not 
incredibly easy to just be like, this day is the day we're going to jam. Mm -hmm. Because things always come up between jobs, shows, other things. And the way the band is set up for right now, or how it is transforming, is that it is all improvisation. Um, but we decide on sort of a lifeline. So, you know, the day before the set, um, I was talking to him and I was like, okay, what's the lifeline for the set? And we basically always decide that it's kind of like, you know, like a heartbeat. So like you're a rising action. Um, so it starts out slow and it rises, rises, and we have a climactic point and it kind of drops down and then ends. Um, and it's really intense in that aspect because you're always, you know, you always have to be listening to your partner. You can't get too engrossed in what you're doing. It is very much a band. It is not just two people on stage that happen to be in a band. Um, and I mean, we're going in the direction, hopefully, we're going to record soon. I think we might try to have like a couple of songs, mm -hmm. but it's like it would be if we put out a record, a couple of those songs, but then improv pieces. And then like when we started playing more shows, it'd be more like that. So we have these songs but then in between these bigger sections of improv, like what we've been doing. But we're still, in all intents and purposes, a very young band. We've only been playing for about three months. And um, it's very exciting, I guess, in that aspect, too, to see the band start getting tighter and coming together and how we play off of each other. always been attracted to strange art, strange sound, and at the time I started playing noise, I bought that synthesizer, the white microbrew, in, as a birthday gift to myself in January of 2015. And um, at the time, as a writer, I was very depressed, which is not unlike any writer. And I was very burnt out from writing plays all the time. Um, Everything I, is incredibly structured. It has to follow this very distinct pattern. Yeah, but also I, I felt, because of the way I analyze language, I guess the way I interpret language from what I gather from talking about with other people is very different than how other people consume and process language and reading and uh, play like playwriting like I'm very focused on how the sounds of words together invoke an emotion as opposed to a sentence or word itself like I believe like two certain letters together can invoke certain things and I pay very close attention to the words chosen within sentences and have you tried and, rapping I'd be terrible at rapping. <laughs> I was really frustrated because I felt there were no words or no words together that could properly convey how I felt at the time. I was in this very deep depression. And it was very frustrating as a writer to not be able to really properly express this sort of confusion and darkness and negative energy. And I had played on synthesizers at friends' houses before, and then I heard a musician named Pharmacon for the first time, and she had released this record called Bestial Burden, which is about how she had organ failure before she went on a European tour and almost died. And it really resonated with me, like these very intense drum sounds, intense like like landscaped like on the synthesizers um you know raw screaming and pharmacon is like this small you know by all different purposes like long blonde hair pretty girl and she just gets up there and just screams and it's just very very like intense Anim animalistic. animalistic and i <clears throat> i remember hearing her and i was like that's exactly how i feel that is how i feel and i was like i need to make that happen and so i put i like that you put it in reverse of what you'd originally been trying to do yeah stop I, trying to find the words because there aren't words there were there were yeah there was none and so the next day i put a synthesizer on paypal credit <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much for being on my oh, show. Oh, thank you. This was fantastic. Absolutely. Let's give some of these, thank some of those, so some of these, yeah. some of these. Oh, so don't break your elbow. Careful. It's called Song People. Song People. Song People. Song People. Song people. It flies away. <laughs> Where'd the name Mother 2 come from? Uh, so there's this video game I love called Earthbound. Uh, why is that? Why is that not coming to With me? a Ness. Okay, there we go. That's why I knew it. Um, we were thinking of names for the band, and, you know, we're, I forget some of this stuff, but I remember I really wanted to be in a band with, like, kind of a nerdy name. I'm a huge dork. So I was like, hey, Stefan, I really want to be in a band named Mother 2. It's the Japanese name for this game called Earthbound. That's really cool. And he was like, I don't know what that is, but yeah, sure, if you want to do that. And I was like, okay. And, but now every time we play, people I'll hear people talk to him and be like, yeah, that's awesome. Mother 2, like Earthbound. He's like, I don't know what that is. Just go talk to Lauren. I'm like, yeah, it's about Earthbound. Hell yeah. 